So, I think the important thing today is that we look at the signs that are written in the Bible and we look at what we're seeing in the world happen and what's being, not in the mainstream media, but in the actual news being reported in the background that we're not seeing that we need to look for ourselves. There are many signs that are starting to show up there are random people putting videos up that have never put videos up before about having strange dreams, visions. There are like videos coming up showing like compilations of all the disasters happening around the world. So you've got uh, End Times Rapture Generation. They literally just do like, like 10, 12 minute videos of like a compilation of like news articles video footage of disasters and chaos happening around the world and strange signs and then you have like earth is our home which is showing like these natural disasters and compilations of like all these strange things happening around the world and unexplainable things and then we've also got disaster compilations which is another channel that literally does as it says it does and it is they these these are like fairly regular channels constantly posting videos of what's happening around the world so there's like Asia's in chaos we're seeing so much happen there there's floods there's hailstorms there's absolute chaos there's gales there's and we're getting regular earthquakes in regular places all around the earth as well and they're all being reported on and we're getting mass amounts of locusts as well and I don't know if you remember in Exodus the ten plagues with Moses. And we're starting to see things from there happening around the world as well. And they're being reported in these videos. And you can actually research this by actually typing in ten plagues and what they are. And then finding if they've happened for yourself. So if we look at, say, if I go to Matthew 24. And I have a New Jerusalem Bible here. So, so you understand what a version because I haven't got King James and each book has a different way of pronouncing words and be thy and verily and so forth. And then this one obviously being the New Jerusalem is written the way it will be so you know in case there's any variations between my version and your version of the Bible because I specifically use this one because it has the name of God in it in the Old Testament so you know that God's name was Yahweh and when he was to Abraham he was known as El Shaddai so we know the different names and obviously with uh, if you haven't uh, studied anything with regards to Enoch or like the Lord of Spirits and there have been many names for God through history that I understand from what I've seen. But so with regards to Jesus in Matthew 24, we go to verse 4 and we'll start from there. And it says, the beginning of sorrows. And Jesus answered them, take care that no one deceives you, because many will come using my name and saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this is something that must happen. But the end will not be yet, for nation will fight against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is only the beginning of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be tortured and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations on account of my name. And then many will fall away. People will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise. They will deceive many. And with the increase of lawlessness, love in most people will grow cold. But anyone who stands firm to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed to the whole world as evidence to the nations. And then the end will come. So that's Matthew. And that's Jesus warning us. So are we starting to see wars happening in various places? Are we starting to see earthquakes in various places? Okay. So we're looking at that at the moment, and then I'm going to now take you over to Joel, which is Old Testament. 
and it is chapter three and it's the beginning of chapter three so it's after this i shall pour out my spirit on all humanity your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old people shall dream dreams and your young people see visions even on the slaves men and women shall i pour out my spirit in those days I shall show portents in the sky and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. So we are starting to see these terrible things come, okay? So we're seeing the chaos, we're seeing the disasters. We're starting to see people dropping videos now saying, I think it's like, we're getting a lot of people talking about rapture dreams and having visions and seeing things. We're getting people of churches talking about things that they're seeing we're also seeing uh, Christian persecution starting to happen more readily around the world China's taken quite a heavy stance against uh, Christianity at the moment which we're starting to see happen and we're starting to see traction in western places as well with the closing of churches but pubs are open and then we're also seeing like a lot of like riots like violence and we're starting to see that spreading into churches and preachers being attacked for the faith and we're starting to see churches getting burnt and attacked so we're seeing violence against the church so we're starting to see that persecution of christians come into pass around the world i'm not sure it's everywhere yet but i think it's beginning to get worse and it's going to keep getting worse so we need to stay ever vigilant and ever strong in what is coming because it's going to come to pass and it's not going to be easy but we got to stay strong so you need to pray for your spiritual armor you need to pray for your faith to be kept hardened and strong and not to be afraid for through Jesus' name everything is possible for the holy spirit will guide you and keep you strong when you pray for you knock on that door god will answer and he will help you so don't forget that and that will get you through now if i now take you back a cross I'll take you into Acts chapter 2, verse 17, which is basically the re-clarification of what I've just read in Joel, showing it in two different parts of the Bible. In the last days, the Lord declares, I shall pour out my spirit on all humanity. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young people shall see visions, your old people dream dreams. Even on the slaves, men and women, shall I pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the sky above, and signs on the earth below the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the lord comes the great and terrible day and all who call on the name of the lord will be saved are you hearing that all who call on the name of the lord will be saved so you need to find your faith you need to find your belief in jesus because a lot of people don't like they, they, they they're busy with the world money work relationships all these different things tv fame gossip whatever gets in the way of the bible and they're slowing you down they really are you need to unshackle yourself from what is holding you back so you can find your faith because god is waiting for you to call on him because he will answer people have had miraculous signs from god he works in mysterious ways we don't understand everything, but we need to put our faith in him. Because until then, our, our lives are just going to be what they're going to be. But with God by your side, everything is possible. You just need faith. So now, if we go back, we're going to now head back to Matthew. We're going to go to chapter 24. And I am going to go to the warnings from the great tribulation of Jerusalem from verse 15 we'll read through okay so when you see the appalling abomination of which the prophet Daniel spoke set up in the holy place then those in Judea must escape to the mountains if anyone is on the housetop he must not come down to collect his belongings from the house if anyone's in the fields he must not turn back to fetch his cloak alas for those with child or with babies at the breast when those days come Pray that you will not have to make your escape in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be great distress unparalleled since. 
the world began and such will never be again. And if that time had not been shortened, no human being would have survived. But shortened that time shall be for the sake of those who are chosen. So the ones that they that God chooses, okay? If anyone says to you then, look, here is the Christ, or over here, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and provide great signs and portents. Enough to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. Look, I have given you warning. So Jesus is warning you about there's going to be a lot of people coming out saying, I'm Jesus. There's going to be a lot of people saying, but there these false prophets doing great signs to deceive and trick people. You know, you are the masters of your own destiny and all, all this sort of stuff and prosperity and wealth and how you deserve all this money. But what does Jesus say when we read previously in the Gospels? It is easier for a camel to walk on the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. So what is wealth? It's nothing. It's a thing. All the items you've ever acquired in your life are pointless. Because you can't take them with you when you die. So don't rely on your things to save you. Rely on your faith in God to save you and pray to Jesus continually to help you and guide you. For he will show you the way. You just need to build your faith. You need to repent. You need to pray and ask for your guidance. You need to ask for your spiritual armour. You need to build that relationship with God. Because if you knock on a stranger's door and say, hey, I'm coming in to live with you, they're going to say, nah, 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 I don't know you. How can I let you in my house? You're a stranger to me. So it is as with God. If you've done nothing in your life to know God, and you've not put in your time to know God, how do you expect him to let you into his kingdom if you are but a stranger to him? So cast this life off from you. Find your faith. Pick up your cross. Renounce self. And walk in Jesus' path. Christians will be persecuted. And there will be hardship. But those that endure. Will be saved. Now I'm going to find the next bit I need to read to you. Which is in Matthew still. And next. We are at verse 26. If then they say to you. Look he is in the desert. Do not go there. Look he is in some hiding place. Do not believe it. Because the coming of the son of man. Will be like lightning. Striking in the east. And flashing far into the west. So. From what I've just said there. Does that sound like Jesus is going to be on the. Like the, the ground on the earth. Coming to see people. And being like hey I'm here. Or is it going to be like like that. Click of a finger. Like a whisper. Blink of an eye. Like that. And there it's done. Okay. So now. We're going to get to verse 29. Immediately after the stress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then too, all the peoples of the earth will beat their breasts, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet to gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So you're hearing, hearing this. There will be like the sound of a great trumpet when all these terrible things are coming. And the angels will come and gather his elect. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he died for you? And that he was resurrected three days later? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you ta taken your repentance? Have you been honest about every little thing that you've done, all the, even the things you've hidden in secret? Have you prayed and admitted to it, repented for it? Have you built that relationship with God? Because this is that time. Because he's waiting to save you. But it's up to you to come to him so he can save you. It's your choice in all truth. Because many things are going to come to pass. So if we now go to verse 37, still chapter 24 of Matthew. 
As it was in Noah's day, so will it be when the Son of Man comes. For in those days, before the flood, people were eating, drinking, taking wives, taking husbands, right up to the day Noah went into the ark. And they suspected nothing till the flood came and swept them all away. This is what it will be like when the Son of Man comes. Then of two men in the fields, one is taken, one left. Of two women grinding at the mill, one is taken, one left. So stay awake, because you do not know the day when your master is coming. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what time of the night the burglar would come, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed anyone to break through the wall of his house. Therefore you too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Do you understand that? So stay at the ready. Don't think, oh, he hasn't come yet. Go get drunk. Have a little bit of fun. i still got time. You don't. He's watching and he knows your heart. He knows your deeds. So this is a time to get our house in order. Get ourselves ready for what's coming. Get that spiritual armor ready. Because we're at the point, if I take you now to Revelations chapter 6, we're going to look about the four horsemen. Okay? So if I go from the first verse of 6 then, to make it easier. Then in my vision I saw the Lamb break one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures shout in a voice like thunder, Come! Immediately I saw a white horse appear, and its rider was holding a bow. He was given a victor's crown, and he went away to go from victory to victory. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature shout, Come! And out came another horse, bright red, and its rider was given this duty, to take away peace from the earth and to set people killing each other. He was given a huge sword. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature shout, Come! Immediately I saw a black horse appear, and its rider was holding a pair of scales. And I seemed to hear a voice shout from among the four living creatures and say, A day's wage for a quart of corn, and a day's wage for three quarts of barley. But do not tamper with the oil or the wine. When he broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature shout, Come! Immediately I saw another horse appear, deathly pale, and its rider was called Death, and Hades followed at its heels. They were given authority over a quarter of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and through wild beasts. So, a quarter of the earth, and we're talking about swords, so wars, people against each other, left versus right, right versus left. We have violence, we have wars beginning, we, we're currently seeing attacks in various places happening. Now famine, right now we are having locusts everywhere, like we've never seen before. This is coming. You understand there is a famine on the way because the food is being destroyed. This year, when everyone was stuck and couldn't go out, the laws were put in place. The harvests couldn't be harvests because there was no one that was allowed to work the harvest. So all the crops were wasted and ploughed back into the ground so that they had to restart. Money's been lost, immense. Food disappeared. Did you not notice the prices increasing on certain things in your normal daily shop? Or or noticing certain things you normally buy now not being so available and now disappearing from the shelves more readily? You had like the farmers with the cattle talking about how they were being told they had to kill a third of their animals. So that's animals just being killed, not for food, just because. Because they couldn't take them to slaughter so they could be made into food for the people. That's just endless killing for what? So food is disappearing, food is going up in price at the same time. And we've got all this chaos, it's happening left, right and centre. Now here we go with the breaking of the fifth, fifth seal from verse 9. When he broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of all the people who had been killed on account of the word of God for witnessing to it. And they shouted in a loud voice, Holy true master, how much longer will you wait? For you pass sentence and take vengeance for our death on the inhabitants of the earth. 
Each of them was given a white robe and they were told to be patient a little longer until the role was completed of their fellow servants and brothers who were still to be killed as they had been. So there's an attack on Christianity coming. So those that believe are being are going to be attacked. And it says, waiting for their fellow brothers. For we are all brothers and sisters, whether we realize it or not. And Jesus said the most important thing is to love God as yourself. Is to love God above all things with your heart, your soul and your mind. And the second was that you must love your neighbor as yourself. So everyone you must love as you would love yourself. Because you do no wrong to yourself, so don't do no wrong to anyone else. And if you wouldn't want to suffer, don't let anyone else suffer. Do as much good as you can. Don't shout out good deeds you do. Just just do them because you care. It's the only reason to do it. Don't, don't do it and then say, oh, I did this to help such and such. Because then you're blowing your own trumpet. And it's not about that. Because God knows what you do. He doesn't need you to shout it. Don't look for praise from people for what you do. Do it because it's in your heart. Because the laws are written on your heart by God. So follow God. And he'll show you the way. Now get ready for the sixth seal. Because at the moment, I think the beginning of the fifth is on our way. Because look what we're seeing. The churches are closed. They're being attacked. I think things are on the way. So we have to get ourselves ready and get ourselves right with God. we got to prepare and be good people. we got to find our faith and build it, strengthen it. I pray that you, yourselves, if you've stayed this long to watch this, thank you for your time. I pray that you study and learn for yourselves. Find your own truth in this. I hope that you have a Bible at your disposal to read and learn and start learning because there isn't much time get to learn learn who Jesus is start with the New Testament go through from Matthew through get get to Revelations find the prophecies go through and then once you know Jesus so you can build that relationship through prayer with Jesus through Jesus name start learning all the Bible learn the prophecies I mean you can use right, the media online to search anything you can think of, so use it for something good. Use it for building your knowledge. Learn about God. Learn about the prophecies. Learn about what's happening in the world in regard to the prophecies so that they can be proved or disproved. I mean, look look at uh, Ron Wyatt. He worked ever so hard. He was able to prove so many of the things written in the Bible by finding them, by searching for them, and then revealing them to the people. But how many people are like, Ron Wyatt never heard of him. Like I said, take your time, do your research. I pray and give love to everyone. That we all stay safe. God bless all of you.